Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome to worship here at St. James Episcopal Church in Skinny Atlas, New York. Welcome to those here in the nave. Particular welcome to the bell choir from the Presbyterian Church across the street. And welcome also especially to those online. There is a bulletin for those online at the website, stjamesscan.org. There are also bulletins in the nave and there, most of the service will be on the screens, three ways. Please join with me in singing the first hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen.
be with you. And also Let us pray the collect for the, night, the tenth Sunday after Pentecost. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. False prophets pop up in every generation, those who seek their own glory and spread lies that twist God's word. A reading from Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth? says the Lord. I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the prophet who, does ha who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For today's psalm, how about congregation if we read it in half a verse? God takes us, excuse me, God takes his stand in the council of heaven. How long will you judge unjustly? Save the weak and the orphan. Rescue the weak and the poor. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. Now I say to you, you are gods. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals. Arise, O God, and rule the earth. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism of which to be baptized and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five and 100 will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky. But why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. At 1045 today, we will celebrate the joyous baptism of Bowie Adair Murray. This is only the second public baptism in the past two and a half years. The first was last week when Bowie's cousin, Posey, was baptized. There were a number of private baptisms, 12 by my count, in the time during the pandemic. But today, it's live in person, right out there. So I encourage you to stay for this joyous service. Now, I haven't preached in a while. Well, I was on, vaca I was on vacation in July and on a pilgrimage and retreat in June. I had been looking at the readings for this week when I was away. I'm sure that you know we have a lectionary and that the readings we've heard this morning are read every three years on the Sunday closest to August 17th. While I was on vacation, I learned of the baptism schedule for today and that Becky would be away. I was more than happy to be able to do the baptism. And then I realized we were gonna welcome Bowie into the community of faith with readings of I come to bring fire to the earth. And quote, from now on, five in one household will be divided. And the Old Testament prophet, Jeremiah, chimes in with, is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Welcome to the family, Bowie. What is this preacher supposed to do? I've seen many artist depictions of Jesus over the years. Granted, he almost always looks like a Northern European, but we'll ignore that for a moment. Jesus always looks like he's smiling or at least placid. Sometimes there are children or animals in the, in the painting, but I never once seen Jesus depicted as throwing fire on the earth. What is the meaning of this reading? Fire could mean purification or even judgment, but also, and perhaps more likely in this case, it is fire pointing to the presence of God. There is Moses and the burning bush. There, is also, there are also tongues of fire on the day of Pentecost. Back in the third chapter of this gospel, the Gospel of Luke, we read the most germane mention of fire. John the Baptist is proclaiming baptism of repentance and forgiveness of sins. People are wondering among themselves if John is the Messiah. John replies, quote, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the strap on his sandals. 
He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So, Bowie, in an hour or so, you'll be baptized with water and the Holy Spirit. And with that, you will receive the fire of the Holy Spirit. I pray she holds on to that. Jesus did not stop there, though. He goes on to say that he comes to bring division, not peace. In many places in the Gospels, Jesus brings peace. And now he says he brings division. He allows one woman from the city who was a known sinner to anoint his feet and tells her to go in peace. In another place, he tells a woman who has been cured of a chronic illness, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Jesus may mean that he has brought division because following him and following his teachings is difficult, very difficult, maybe even extremely difficult. Jesus reached out to the outcasts of his time. He spent time with sinners, with tax collectors, with Samaritans, with those with serious, possibly contagious illnesses, and with the desperately poor and with all sorts of people, people that religious leaders of that time would well avoid. Jesus calls us to do the same thing. And we promise to do those things in the baptismal covenant. Quote, will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ, unquote. We are called not only to say that we believe, but to make an example of ourselves. And we will, from time to time, fail. So we promise, quote, whenever we fall into sin, we will repent and return to the Lord. Not if we fail, but when we fail. We all fail many times. Jesus did seek to bring peace, just not the lesser peace of get along, go along. That's easy. Enabling and accepting what we know is wrong is not what Jesus sought. The greater peace is not easy. It was not easy for those who fought for civil rights in the 1960s. It was not easy for those who fought for the right to vote. It was not easy for those in this country and in Europe who ended slavery. Frederick Buechner, author, preacher, and theologian, I think he's Presbyterian, he wrote on the difficulty of being Christian, and I quote, if you tell me Christian commitment is a kind of thing that has happened to you once and for all time, like some sort of pl spiritual plastic surgery, I say to you, you're either pulling the wool over your own eyes or you're trying to pull them over my eyes. Every morning, Buechner says, you should wake up in your bed and ask yourself, can I believe it all again today? No, better still, don't ask yourself that until after you've read the New York Times, until after you've studied that daily record of the world's brokenness and corruption, which should always stand side by side with your Bible. And Buechner goes on, then ask yourself if you can believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ again for that particular day. If your answer is always yes, then you probably don't know what believing means. At least five times out of ten, the answer should be no, because no is as important to yes, maybe more so. The no is what proves you're human, in case you ever doubted it. And then if some morning the answer happens to be really yes, it should be a yes that's choked with confession and tears and great laughter, end quote. On those days, even if they be few, when you can honestly say that you believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and all that it requires, caring for the outcast, the sick and the marginalized, and seek to bring real peace to the earth, you will change your life and that of others, all the others around you, even if you do cause division. Bishop Frank Logue of Georgia put it this way in a sermon he preached three years ago. Living into the new life in Jesus, which is promised in baptism, can and will change your behavior 
and your attitude over time if you take it seriously. He goes on, taking the promises made in baptism should change our lives. Yet this is in tension with the desire to avoid conflict and to preserve a lesser peace. The cost of accepting these accommodations and compromises, he says, is that this prevents our breaking through to the deeper peace waiting for us. Shalom, God's true and lasting peace, calls us to stand against injustice. Anytime we preserve the peace at someone or some group's expense, we trade God's shalom for a poor imitation. End quote. So Bowie will commit, or her parents and godparents will commit for her to a rather challenging goal. I pray that as she grows, she will love others in the power of the Spirit. And as it, as it says in the sacrament of baptism, and go into the world and witness to God's love. Amen. Please stand as you are able, and if you are brave enough, we will affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Loving God, hear us as we pray. To God who so loved the world, let us pray with hearts full of love. In this diocese, we pray for our bishop, the Right Reverend Dr. Dee Dee Duncan Proby, and the people of Christ Episcopal Church in Willard, and their priest, the Reverend Leslie Adams. We pray also for the people of Grace Episcopal Church in Willowdale and their priest, the Reverend Ed Murphy. In our companion diocese of El Salvador, we pray for the people of San Jorge and Acohutla. In the Episcopal Church, we pray for our presiding bishop, the Most Reverend Michael Curry, and the people of the Diocese of Western Louisiana and their bishop, the Right Reverend Jacob W. Owensby. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the people of the extra-provincial Anglican churches. May the church's life be marked by prayer and loving service to those in need. Loving God, Hear us as we pray. for peace among all peoples of the earth. May God redeem us from the slavery of fear, selfishness, and division. Loving God. Hear us as we pray. 
for the health and sustainability of the earth and all living things. May we grow as stewards of the marvelous gift you have given in all creation. Loving God, for this nation and our local communities. May we continually seek to offer gifts of care and advocacy, intervention, and support until all people live in justice and freedom. Loving God. For the Onondaga Nation of the Haudenosaunee people, the traditional custodians of the land on which we are worshiping today, we acknowledge that they have occupied and cared for this land over countless generations. We celebrate their continuing contributions to the life of this region. Loving God. For those who suffer from any illness, be it physical, mental, or spiritual, especially those we name silently or aloud. Lord, may they know the healing touch of Jesus. May they know him to be a source of rest, of comfort, of restoration. Loving God. For those we have loved but see no longer, especially those we name silently or aloud. Remember this week particularly the very Reverend Luis Serrano who served 50 years as rector of San Juan Evangelista in San Salvador. He died this past Monday. Don, Betsy. John. May they live forever with God and Christ, loving God. Hear our prayers, loving and gracious God, and receive them for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As you may have figured out by now, Becky's not here. She, she and Kip are on uh, vacation. I think we're doing okay. And uh, Tom Murphy is filling in once again at the organ. Thanks, Tom. Turns out we're related, but it's another story. Um, Becky will be back in the office on Tuesday, August 23rd. Particular welcome to those who are new to St. James. If you're here in the nave, uh, you'll find a blue card in the pocket in the pew in front of you. So if you would like, you can fill that out. We'd love to have you fill it out and let us know if, who you are and how we might help you connect here at St. James. 
and then just drop it on the offering plate. We particularly thank once again the, the Presbyterian Church Bell Choir for playing for us this morning. When you come forward to receive communion, if you'd like to receive the chalice, you are free to do so or not. If you do receive, if for any reason you choose not to receive the chalice, remember that when you receive only bread, you still, still receive the full benefit of the sacrament. We are though following the diocesan guidelines, which says you must, we must drink from the cup and not in tinct. There will be chalices on each side and there, uh, uh, Reverend Kathy and I will be in the center with the, with the bread. And I think the bell choir has arranged their standing so that you can get by there um, after you receive if you're on this side. So once again, thanks to all. We have a whole bunch of birthdays this week. And uh, today, Lily Sven. Later this week, Jameson Palin. Also, Nathan Samhammer and Marcy Weed on the same day. We have two wedding anniversaries to remember. Jim and Alice Isles celebrating their 41st wedding anniversary. And Maggie and David, Dave Perry are celebrating their 12th wedding anniversary. Those were both last Monday. Is there anyone else who's celebrating a birthday or anniversary? I didn't get their name. How many? Oh, birthday. <laughs> For all these birthdays and anniversaries, please join me in the anniversary and birthday blessings, which should be on the screen. It's also near the bottom of page five. May the strength of God pilot you. May the power of God preserve you. May the wisdom of God instruct you. May the hand of God protect you. May the way of God direct you. May the shield of God guard you against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. And may the spirit of God bless you in the coming year. Know that whoever you are and wherever you may be on your journey of faith, you are certainly invited to the Lord's table this morning.
Our service continues with a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and worship grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom all this we ask through your son jesus christ by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen, amen. and now as our savior christ has taught us we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Please stand as you are able for the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. communion from our table to our friend Dorothy and give us give her our love in conclusion in this communion now and forever as long as she lives amen may the sun shine on you may the rain dance on your upturned face may the stars make you wonder and smile. May the bounty and beauty of the earth bless you, and may you bless the earth in planting and protest and sharing food. And may God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer bless you now and forever. Amen. <laughs> in God's world, go and be creative, go and work for justice, go and love your neighbors, go and walk with God. Amen. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.